The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Makaha Tribe on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus job number 32820. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting just under the front bumper, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks attached to the frame rail. Moving up onto the face of the front bumper, you'll find passenger side and driver side air horns. Just located on the driver's side next to the air horn is where you'll find your electronic siren PA speaker system. Moving up onto the bumper extension itself, you'll find your swivel discharge located inside the tubbed area. And then also on the driver's side, you'll find your mechanical siren. Moving up onto the body, you'll find your headlight structure housing the low and high beam headlights. High beam is on the inside. Moving upward, we'll find a turn indicator. Just inside of that same housing, you'll find a emergency warning lights. Moving up onto the windshield area, you'll find three windshield wipers across your seamless one-piece windshield. Let's take a couple close-ups of those items that we just talked about. These are those front hooks located underneath the front bumper. Siren and air horn. Moving now to the side, you'll see the extension. There's also an emergency warning light on your side extension in addition with your front bumper, swivel discharge, dry deck material inside, and also Velcro to hold your hose in place. Close up here, the headlight structure and also emergency warning lights. Let's move around to the side where you'll find that clearance light, forward marker light. Let's take a look at the side of the pumper. Let's first start with front and rear doors all have keyed entry locks, pull to gain access. You'll also find your grab handles located for points of entry in and out of the vehicle for personnel in the front or back. As we move to the side, you'll find the auto eject. It is the yellow item indicating now. This is for plug in for shore power. As we move now up to the very top, you'll find your mirrors, West Coast style. These are gonna be a flat and convex mirror. And then over to the rear of the cab, you'll find a side facing scene light. Let's move from this location just under the front step where you'll find your drain valve for your front swivel discharge. You'll also find an entrance or clearance light perimeter lighting located just under each step well. Let's move up into the same area. You'll find a step light and then just beneath that step light, this is going to be the driver's side. You'll find an air inlet. Let's move uh, just inside the cab now. We'll identify a few things. Each door will have these set of stickers located on them. They are for your personal safety. In addition with this Pierce placard indicating a variety of information, starting with the date of manufacture, job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, the VIN number, and all of its components, fluid capacities, and fluid types for your vehicle. Let's go ahead and move just inside of the cab now to the floorboard area where we'll find on the far left hand side of the floor mechanical siren foot pedal. This will activate your mechanical siren. Moving just to the right you'll find your brake treadle. Further to the right you'll find your accelerator pedal. Moving up about the left knee of the operator you'll find a set of switches. These are predominantly going to be diagnostic switches. They do have lights indicating that they have been activated. Moving up from this location, you'll find the silver quarter turn master battery switch. Just to the right of that, you'll find a green cap. This is your diagnostic location where you'll plug in for your transmission and engine uh, diagnostic information. Let's move up from this location where you'll find your ignition and start switches. To the right, you'll find a set of switches here, one labeled EM, which stands for emergency master, activates all of your emergency lights. To the right, headlight switch, and then panel rocker switch, allowing to brighten or dim lights within the panel area. You'll also find a push and pull for tilt and extend, your turn signals, and also your hazard lights located on the column. Let's take a look at the dash itself, where we'll find on the left the transmission oil, DEF level, and water temperature. On the right-hand side, you'll find the volts, fuel, front and rear air, Located in the center, you'll find the speedometer and tachometer. Diagnostic information will display above and below the speedometer. Let's move slightly to the right of the steering column where you'll find your 
uh, okay to engage your high idle indicator and also switch. Just beneath that area, you'll find your pump shift. There are instructions here for road to pump, and then on the other side, from pump to road. Remember, when you're trying to get into pumping mode, you need two green indicators, which are located on the left, one pump engaged, and the other okay to pump prior to exiting the cab. Moving just to the right, you'll find your mirror controls for the main mirror and also convex mirror. Moving up, you'll find the pull to apply your system parking brake or push to release. And then to the right, you'll find your Allison digital transmission pad. Moving up, you'll find engine brake, also engine brake settings for low, medium, and high, a mirror heat switch, and then also your load manager. Let's move further up onto the dash itself. As you look to the uh, small switch on the inside here, this is your windshield wipers, push to apply windshield wiper fluid, twist for speed control, and then to the right, you'll find your climate control for heat and defrost, air conditioning, and heater. You'll also find a caution switch to disengage your retarder on slippery surfaces. Let's move up to the very top overhead. The driver position will identify a few of the switches in this area. First, starting on the left with the emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. Once again, any of these switches have been activated, they will illuminate within the switch itself. Let's move just to the right of this location, same area. Over the driver's position, you'll find the front flood, a siren or horn selector switch, air horn or electric horn selecting switch, and then also driver flood, siren brake in red, and passenger side flood. Moving further to the right, you're going to find your code 3 PA system and siren. Moving further to the right, you'll find this light if illuminating, indicating do not move your apparatus. You have a compartment or door open. You'll also find the monitor for your backup camera. Just in the middle, you'll find your seatbelt information. This will display if someone is sitting in the seat, indicating green that they are belted, red indicating that they are not belted. Let's go ahead and move overhead to the roof area where you'll find these push on and off switches. Pushing on the lens will indicate either you're turning on the red light or the white light. Air conditioning unit located directly in the center with vent control. As we move from this location to the outside, we're going to go with Goodyear tires and also Alcoa aluminum wheels. As we move forward, we'll find your Shoreline inlet. This is a 15 amp auto eject plug. We'll move now to the rear section of the apparatus. First, starting with the step, you'll find step lights located in the step well area. As we move inside, you'll find the two rear facing SCBA seats, and then you'll also find two forward facing seats. This is an example of the SCBA seat rear facing. Located between those two seats, you'll find this access door. This gains access for your daily checks for oil and transmission. Let's go ahead and move now to the outside to the body of the vehicle. We'll first start with the very front section of the pump panel. Let's start just underneath this area with first a drain located just off the front bumper load. And then we'll also move up for a perimeter light located in the pump panel area. And then all of your associated color-coded discharge drains will be located just underneath. Let's go from this location, just move upward to the upper left-hand corner. You'll find a watchress placard indicating the type of pump you have and also the tested pump capacity. You'll also find all of your color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Moving from this location, you'll find your 2.5 inch auxiliary inlet. This is a female inlet. Just above that location, you're going to find your minimum operation maintenance schedule. We'll go over that in just a moment. And then you'll also find a access door to gain access behind the pump panel. To the right, you'll find your pump shift. Moving upward from this location, you'll find your main pump drain. And then we'll jump all the way over to the left-hand side where you'll find two two and a half inch discharges, one in red and one in blue, clearly color-coded and also labeled. Moving just to the right, we're gonna find your Pierce American Flag Eagle logo. This is your large diameter pump intake. Moving up to the right hand side, you'll find this placard regarding a warning. Do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam. Uh, there's the possibility of foam failure. Moving to the right, you'll find the red lever. This controls your draft and foam operations. Let's move up from this location where you'll find all your color coded and labeled discharge drains. We also have a warning label here located on the panel regarding 
uh, pressure hazard. Be cautious when opening caps that may be under pressure. Moving to the right, you'll find a twist, not a pull. This is your engine cooler. Moving further to the right, you'll find an air prime switch. Just next to that air prime, you'll find a black speaker. That's an audible alarm. If you choose to dampen the sound, the outer edge of that bezel will allow you to do that. To start from that location, you'll find your pressure throttle governor. Moving to the left, you'll find a set of switches in the gray area. This is a green indicator that your pump is properly engaged. Moving to the right, you'll find in the red module, this is your foam level indicator. And then to the left, you'll find your Husky foam system. Uh, these are the instructions and also the operational module. Moving up from this location, you'll find specifications and also directions. And in the gray area at the very top, we're gonna find your master intake gauge and master discharge gauge. In between the two of those, you'll find your test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. Let's get back to that placard that we talked about a little earlier. This is the uh, placard regarding your apparatus for test pressures for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. That coincides with the minimum operation maintenance schedule that you'll perform on a six month basis. Let's move from this location to the very top. On the left hand side, you'll find your cross lays you also have a grab handle for going aloft and also a grab handle on the very top and fold down steps on the right hand side. Let's move now to the midsection of the body where you'll find a marker clearance light located just in front of the rear axle. Directly over the tire you'll find a side facing emergency warning light and then as we move all the way to the very top you'll find a side facing scene light. Let's go over a few of the items that we've talked about. First in the first compartment with the door and the compartment open you'll find your battery uh, system. This is your charging system for maintaining the batteries on the apparatus. When your vehicle is plugged into shore power through this outlet, it will activate your battery charging system. Let's move downward. This is going to be for your light on the top of the vehicle, your command light. This is the plug-in location for the remote. Let's go through a few items here. First, starting with the DEF fill cap. It is the blue cap. It's a 4.5 US gallon tank, and just above that you'll find your SCBA bottle storage location. You do have Alcoa wheels and Goodyear tires at the rear. This is that emergency warning light directly over those rear tires. As we move upward from this location, you'll find a compartment with roll-up door and LED lighting inside. Let's move from this location to the rear section. When we open this door, this is where you're going to find SCBA bottle storage location and also your ultra low sulfur diesel fill. There are two straps located here for securing your uh, SCBA bottles also. As we move to the rear, you're going to find LED, LED lighting and also an adjustable shelf. Moving back up to the walkway at the very top, this is a walk light and then also a side facing scene light. From this location, let's move to the very rear section of the apparatus. This is that 360 degree emergency warning light. Just a quick view here of the rear of the apparatus and the driver's side of the vehicle. Let's start now just underneath the rear section where you'll find two perimeter lighting located on the right and left and directly in the center you'll find an attachment or tow hook. Moving up above on the diamond plate on the left and right hand side, starting at the top, we'll find an emergency warning light, a brake light, a turn indicator, and a backup light. You'll also find a rear two and a half inch discharge on the driver's side. Located in the center, you'll find a backup camera. And then we also have a few placards located here that you shouldn't ride on or climb on the rear of the apparatus while it's in motion. Let's move from this location now to the very bottom. There are the fold down steps down at the lower section as we gain access inside to the rear compartment with an adjustable shelf. Moving to where your ladder storage is located behind the Pandora D handle for gaining access, we have a 24 foot extension ladder, a 14 foot roof ladder, and also storage locations for long tools and also a 10 foot folding ladder. take a quick look at the side of the apparatus. This is the passenger side. We'll go through some of the items here, although most of them mirror the driver's side. Let's start up at the very top with the rear hose bud area. You have two adjustable hose dividers. Moving into the dunnage area, you'll find your night scan. Up in the very top of that uh, image here, you'll find the top fill location for your water tank. And then just to the right, you'll find a top fill location fill for your foam tank. 
We do have a warning label here once again regarding don't mix different brands or consistencies of foam for that may be caused for foam failure. Located in the center you'll find your master stream device and then just to the right you can see your Husky 3 foam system and then you'll find in the lower section here there's a black cap. This is the fill location for your Husky 3 reservoir. Let's move now to the side of the apparatus once again. We'll identify a few items within this area also. First, let's start with the rear compartment, LED lighting, adjustable shelving, and ventilation within this compartment. As we move forward, you'll find front and rear door access locations for SCBA bottle storage location. Each of those locations also have those retaining straps so that the bottle, while it moves around while in motion, doesn't actually fall out of the compartment area. Goodyear tires, Alcoa wheels, emergency light directly over that rear axle. Let's move to the center compartment now where you'll find LED lighting also located in this compartment. Moving now to the forward compartment, I would like to point out down at the lower corner here, just below the clearance light, we do have a warning label here. Be cautious when uh, the location you park your vehicle, those exhaust temperatures can be extremely hot. Let's move now to the midship location. This is gonna be the pump panel on the passenger side. Let's start just underneath the bottom area you'll find that your relief valve is not capped. Moving just in front of that, you'll find a clearance light, LED light, downward facing for your ground area. Let's move up above the diamond plate now and identify a few items. First, color-coded and labeled discharge drains for this side of the pumper. As we move upward, you'll find an access panel door to gain access behind the panel. You'll also find the Pierce American Flag Eagle large diameter passenger side inlet. We also have once again a warning label here regarding pressure hazard. Be cautious when removing caps that may be under pressure. To the right we have your green large diameter pump discharge and then to the right we have a two and a half inch discharge. Let's take a close up look here down at the very bottom. These are once again going to be your color coded and labeled discharge drains. As we move upward from this location I just want to point out once again that warning label regarding pressure hazard. And then as we move just inside that pan door, you'll find your foam drain. This is a twist. And then just beneath that in the red area, you'll find the nut on the end. That is gonna be your internal relief valve settings. We're moving upward now on the panel. We have an additional access panel door. Once we gain access inside uh, for maintenance, you'll also find at the very top section or just above from this location here, you'll find in a compartment light switch to gain access for all the compartment lights with inside this area. This is your cross lay. Let's now move to the cab section here on the passenger side. Let's start at the rear cab. As we go interior, you'll find step lights moving inside to the cab area for your steps. As we move up from this location, you'll find that grab handle to gain access in and out. Heaters directly below the two rear facing seats. You'll also find that set of warning labels here affixed to all door panels for firefighter safety. As we look inside, you'll see your SCBA seat brackets on the rear facing seats. And then as we look to the rear section, you'll find two nestled seats together, also with SCBA brackets. Overhead, you'll find push on and off red or white, depending on the lens you push, uh, overhead lights. Let's move now to the officer's area. There are two foot pedals in this location and then also on the right hand side you'll find the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. Let's go back to those foot pedals. First you're going to find your electronic siren and also a mechanical siren foot pedal. Let's go ahead and move back to the officer's seat. On the pedestal itself you'll find a lift and turn latch which will gain access inside this compartment storage area. As we look to the seat for the officer position, it also has an SCBA bracket. Let's move overhead. You'll find push on and off red and white lights and also future locations for additional options of equipment. Moving to the dash area, you'll find your air horn. Just beneath that, you'll find two locations, barrel style, 12 volt access locations. Moving now back to the outside, at the very front, you'll find your five running lights located across the front of the apparatus on the brow. Located just above that, you'll find a forward-facing scene light. And then all the way up onto the top of the roof is where you'll find your emergency warning light bar. 
Congratulations on your new Pierce Fire apparatus. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.